Right, I'm going to talk about uh, sharpening carving tools, carving gouges, uh, the kind of traditional way uh, with oil stones, uh, slips and a leather strop. Uh, there are various ways and there's not a hard and fast way I'm sure. Uh, this is just the way I've done it over the last 20-30 years um, and it seems to work. Yeah, I've tried various forms of stones, uh, the diamond stones, the um, Japanese water stones. In the end, I always come down to the oil stones. I seem to be able to get things much sharper uh, with an oil stone in the traditional way. So this is what I'm going to show you today. Um, okay, so again, now, sharpening stones, you want the very best stone you can get. Uh, preferably an Arkansas or a Washita stone. Uh, natural stones. Various strange looking things. I tend to get them from car booth sales and things. You can buy new ones, they're very expensive, um, but worth the money. You need as smooth as you can get pretty much, uh, as fine as you can get. This one is beautiful. Um, these modern ones, you know, are very nice. This is my favourite one. Um, I'm not sure if it's an Arkansas or a Washita, but it's, it's a lovely stone, very smooth. I have a couple of little pins in the back. Of, this, of the box, and you can just knock it onto the bench to hold it still. Uh, again, now oil, I just use a mixture of engine oil and white spirit. Uh, you can get proper honing oils, but I find that works fine. I want a fair bit of oil. Um, now, I've missed a big stage here because we'll do that in another time, um, which concerns the grinding, but that's a whole different. Thing. I'm going to treat this as, as though this is ground to a nice even bevel. The angle of the bevel, again, I'm not too fussed about, as long as, I, as, long as it's the angle that you carve at. And which is good if you've done a little bit of carving. You tend to know what kind of angle you, your blade wants to cut. So you're not up there, you're not down there. And that's the angle we're going to sharpen our tool at. Um, okay, so I've got my oil on my stone, I've got my stone at, uh, I suppose that's kind of parallel with me. Um, I've got the half of the thing is getting your elbows in, your body nicely positioned so you can keep that angle nice and rigid uh, without any changes. And what I do, I start, I start on that first corner and then I just in one movement I come across to the other corner. And the thing is, the trick with this, to get it things really sharp, is the downward pressure. Um, so you can do it as slow as you like, and you can hear that cutting, can't you? You can hear that grinding along. I think a common mistake people make, they try and go too fast, they get involved with this figure of eight thing, which is really hard to keep your angle straight. All you want to do is to start off on that side, Keep your downward pressure with those fingers and go from one to the other in one smooth movement. That bevel, of course, is nice and flat. If you've ground that before, we'll say we'll go into that another time. But you can just about, you can feel that bevel. If you're putting the downward pressure, you can feel where that bevel is. And you can also see the oil just comes like a little surface tension thing. So you can just see, you see exactly where that bevel is. But it's, I'm putting a lot of pressure on here, lots of downward pressure. I've got my elbows tucked in, so I'm keeping the angle really rigid. Find your bevel. Now what you're after is to get a little burr on the inside of your tool. Um, and there's ways, ways of holding this. You want to hold your tool fairly up, up near the end, near the cutting edge. And you can just, by rubbing your finger across the top, you can just feel a little burr. And that's just what you want. You just want that little tiny burr on the inside. Now, with carving gouges like this, this is a number four, slight curve on it. I tend to put, and the most professional carvers I know, put a little tiny bevel on the inside as, as well as the outside. So with a slipstone, again, you're a nice Arkansas slipstone. Um, 
you can tell if it's a really good one, you can hold it up to the light and actually you can almost see through it. Um, and that's how you tell that's a really good fine slipstone. So I'm going to just put my little bevel on the inside. I'm going to, if that's upright, I'm just going to angle it ever so slightly like that. And I'm just going to get rid of my burr, which is probably already gone. But I'm going to do a little bit more work on it and actually put a little tiny bevel on the inside. So my burr's gone. You can see, you'll be able to see a little tiny sliver of, of shiny silver on the inside. But of course now the burr's back on the outside because I've kind of pushed it over. And this is where the things get really sharp, and which is what you want. So this is worth taking your time on. So now I'm going to just literally do a couple of strokes. Now that burr's gone on the outside. So I'm just, you have to go backwards and forwards. It's back on the inside now. You have to go backwards and forwards just doing those one or two strokes. And I say it's worth taking the time because this is where it gets really sharp. Keep just feeling for that burr. So the idea is you end up with no burr at all and a really, really sharp chisel. But you do, as you can see, you just get down to maybe one or two strokes very lightly at the end. And it is, it really is worth taking that time. And just feeling all the time. Okay, right. So, now the way to feel if a tool's sharp is to hold it up as near to the cutting edge as you can with the the bevel towards you and carefully, obviously you don't do it like that because instant cut. It's almost say like you're stroking a kitten or something, just a really, really delicate stroke, right angles to your blade and you can feel a bit sharp, you'll feel each kind of fingerprint just gripping the top of the top of the top of this tool. And that's when you know it's sharp. And no but no burr either side, because you just, just run up like that. And that feels really sharp, but that is not sharp enough um, because the next stage is what will make it really razor sharp. Um, again, it's worth spending that time. As you can see, it doesn't take too long once you've got it nice and brown. Um, so the next thing is stropping. Uh, stropping, I've just made this little leather one here, little leather, piece of, piece of leather, the rough side of the leather some stropping paste on the leather. Again, get this in a paste like this. Last forever, that'll last a lifetime, that little part. A little bit of paste on there. Um, again, my little pins on the back, just to stop it moving about. And then, just literally doing that. Again, I'm putting a lot of pressure down. Like that, and fairly fast, just pulling it across. See, now that feels really sharp. I've got one of these proprietary stropping things here for my different shapes. You can make these up. A couple of strops on the inside. And make sure, keep trying it because, see that last one just made it feel not quite so sharp. Because, just keep trying it because a, that's it. a couple of them extra ones, if it doesn't feel quite sharp enough to go back and do another, another one or two and that feels absolutely razor sharp now. The way you can tell if it's razor sharp, get a piece of wood and go across the grain. You can hear that nice cut, the wood's shiny, it's just a really sharp tool that it's now. But it, they say it's worth spending that little tiny bit of extra time, um, yeah, to get them razor sharp. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>